You know, this week I had the opportunity to travel down this shore and do some striped bass fishing. It's the end of the year bite and things were pretty consistent. I had a great day out on the water and I was able to land a couple of really nice fish to bring home for dinner. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to share with you how I make striped bass for dinner. Of course you can make it in the oven or you can fry or do different things, but one of the ways that I enjoy is making them into fish cakes. It's an easy, simple recipe. I'm going to take you through the whole thing step by step, and I think you're really going to like it. My name's Dave, and welcome to our channel, The Frugal Sportsman. Okay, as you can see here, I've got some <clears throat> fresh striped bass fillets. And I've got one from a smaller fish and then halves from a larger fish. So I've got quite a bit here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready and we're going to poach this right away. And that's going to make sure the meat is cooked through entirely. And then uh, from there, I'll go and I'll mix the uh, mixture we're going to put this in so we can make our patties so let me take them over to the pot I have on the stove it's already going and we'll drop these in for about five minutes uh, I'm gonna do in a few batches because there's a lot of fillets here and uh, the pot isn't that big now the other thing is uh, you could do is you know you don't have to make all these but in my family these will go quickly uh, I like to have them for lunches. Um, you can even freeze them, pull them out, and throw them back in the microwave <clears throat> at another time. So I like to make a big batch, but you're welcome to make as little or as much as you want. So let's go ahead and jump over uh, to the pot. I'll throw some of these in, then I'll pull out some spices, start prepping the vegetable, and we'll get going. Okay, I just put some into the pot here, into some hot water. I'll leave them in there for about five to seven minutes. This just helps them cook, cook through. And I'm not worried about the red meat that's on there. Uh, that I'm going to pick off later, but it, here's some on here right now. But if you don't care about eating the red meat, um, you like to flavor it, you're welcome to do that. This is some I just took out a few minutes ago. And as you can see, it's just about perfect. It's flaking, cooked through. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that cool, and then I'll put it in with all the other mixture to make the cakes. Okay, now that I've got the bowl rinsed out, the fish is over on the plate cooling, I want to add the ingredients here that we're going to make our mixture out of, and then we're going to add our fish into it. So I've got some Dijon mustard, uh, and I'm not going to measure this, uh, because everything is going to be dependent on how much fish you have. I just kind of eyeball everything here. And this is probably for the amount of fish I have there, about a quarter cup and put that over there. Uh, I've got some Worcestershire sauce. This is Lee and Pairings. And eight big dashes of that. Get some parsley flakes. Let's give that a good shake. Again, you can do this to taste. Uh, I've got some garlic powder. And again, it's going to depend on how much fish you have. And I have some onion powder. My son doesn't like onion, so I'll substitute with the powder. And then I'm going to use some Old Bay here. All right. I'm not going to use a lot of it, though. I don't want it to be overpowered. And I've got three stalks of celery off of a bunch of celery. I'll put that in. And the final thing will be adding some mayonnaise. Let me scoop that out. And I have a heaping spoonful like this. So we'll put one, two, three, four. Four of those. And 
Then I'm going to add some eggs. <laughs> we got this from our chickens. Look at the size of this thing. And here's a duck egg that we have. So I'm going to add two eggs into this, but I can't believe the size of that egg. It's enormous. So just add those in like that. All right, now I can mix this all around. I'm going to pre-mix this before I add the fish because I don't want to break up the fish too bad. I like to have some chunks in there. So as you can see, I just keep folding all this in. Now the celery, if you don't want to add the celery, I like a little crunch in mine, in my fish cakes. So, you know, you're welcome to add it or subtract it, whichever you prefer. All right. Now it's a little wet, I'm going to add a little bit of breadcrumb and then we'll start adding the fish. So I'm not adding a lot of breadcrumb because I don't want to use it as a filler. I just want to soak up a little bit of the water in there. And that should, that should be good. Alright, now I'm going to bring the fish over and we can start picking off the uh, the meat and placing it in there. Okay, so now that I've got the meat over here, um, all I'm going to do is just flake it off like that. Just break it up a little bit. Not going to go crazy. If I've got any of the red meat, I might just take that to the side like that. Like I said, about five to seven minutes is all you need to cook this through so it gets nice and flaky like that. Fish does not take very long to cook. So as I'm picking off the fish like this and adding it to the mixture, um, I want to continue to fold it around like this. And now as you can see, it's starting to stiffen up a little bit. That's what I want. And that will also tell you when you got your consistency to fish, fish mixture um, right, because um, you don't want it too soupy, you don't want it too dry. Just taking some of that red meat out of there give it a little better flavor with the white meat and again you want to let this fish cool down before you do this because it does get hot so we'll just keep adding to this and I will show you what it looks like in a minute when I'm all done okay so as you can see I've all I've got left here is just pretty much the red meat I'll set that to the side And now I'll give you a better look here at this. I'm going to continue folding in these chunks. Break them up a little bit, the real big ones. And now they're starting to come together. And you could use your hands too as well. Don't be afraid to do that. You'll get these. Now. It's a little watery yet, so I am going to add some breadcrumbs just as a bond, bonding agent. Okay. I don't want to add too many breadcrumbs because I don't want it to fill and take away from the taste. And it's just about there. Just a little bit more. Anyway, so that's going to have to be enough. All right. Now we're looking good. That's about the consistency you want. Right, like that. Enough where you could put them together and they'll they'll hold into a patty shape like that. So they can be regular, they don't have to be perfectly round. And that's about as big as I want them. Just a, a, about the size of a small hamburger. All right, so let's go get things ready on the stove side and we'll start frying some of these up. Okay, with the oil shimmering in the pan, 
I'm very gently going to place these in there. You don't want to crowd the pan and you want to make sure they cook thoroughly on one side and then flip them over. I'll probably give them about three or four minutes. Okay, so after about four minutes they're ready to flip and I'll just gently use a spoon to do that. Help them along. And I'm using cast iron because it directs the heat more to all the areas and it doesn't give you any cold spots and it's classic to cook on besides we'll give that another four minutes and then we'll plate it so I'm going to take these out now and put them on a plate with paper towel just like this Then I will make the, uh, oh they look good. I will make the rest of this while these cool down and then we'll give it a taste test. I put about a half inch of oil in the pan in case you're wondering how much is in there. So now let's go ahead and add the rest of this. Okay, let me break off a piece here. That's how it looks inside. I don't know if you can see it. it's nice and moist. Really good. I didn't add any salt or pepper because I figured you would do that to whatever taste you like. I know in all these videos when people cook they always say, mmm, it's so good, but it really is. And you know you can do this with any type of fish you want, whether it's freshwater, saltwater. Blue fish it might work really good with. I tend to use it with striped bass. Mmm, really good. Hey, I hope you found that video helpful. And you know, if you did, I'd really encourage you to give it a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to our channel. We've got lots of DIYs and how-to videos that I think is really going to help you not only save money, but help deepen your outdoor experience as well. You know, when it comes to things like fish cakes, a lot of people might think, well, you know, that's a unique way of, of making fish. I never thought of that. And you know, some people might be kind of reluctant to try it because it's something different and you know that's not unlike us spiritually you know there's a verse in the Bible in Psalms 34 8 it says this taste and see that the Lord is good blessed is the man who takes refuge in him now why do you think that verse exists well I think it's because a lot of people are reluctant to try to have a relationship with God they have this thing in their mind, this perception that, you know, God's some ogre or, you know, maybe God is there to wreck their fun, but nothing could be farther from the truth. God created you and he created me to have a relationship with him because he loves us that much. He wants us to experience all the goodness he has for us. And the only way we'll be able to do that is if we follow after him, if we taste the things that he has for us, if we experience him as if we're experiencing the comfort of food in our life and in our mouth. I don't know what it is that you're taking refuge in right now. It could be money or it's as your security. It could be possessions. It could be pursuing a lot of different things. But the fact of it is, I think God's created a void in our life that only He can fill. I've seen so many people that go around this life pursuing all those things that find them, their lives empty. And yet they refuse to have this relationship with God that he, He's designed us to have. You know, if you find yourself struggling and not knowing where to turn, maybe it's time you turn back to God. He's there for you. He loves you. He wants to care for you. And more importantly, He wants to forgive you of your sins and allow you to spend all eternity with Him in heaven. And you know, if you're not sure how to go about having that relationship with Him, well, I've written a free book. Um, it's in the description below. It's called Growing Deep. I have several other books down there as well, but 
The book Growing Deep is, shares with you a little bit about my life, but more importantly about the scriptures and how you can come to know God in a personal relationship, how you can have your sins forgiven, how you can have your heart changed, and how He can become the Lord of your life. So I encourage you to check out the book. It's free. It doesn't require any email or anything to capture. You just click on it and start reading. And hopefully it will help guide you um, using the Bible to uh, a relationship that is right and pure with God again. And so, guys, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. Really appreciate all your support. I want you to always remember that God loves you more than you could ever know. Don't forget to get outdoors. And God bless.